Let's continue here with post-processing effects. There's still a lot more stuff that, uh, that I'd like to show you. So let me take the first person controller here. I'm going to just rotate them around to look at our scene right there. Okay, so we've already seen how to use that uh, those flare effects and things. I've set up some settings that I think look good for the scene that I'm working on here. Of course, you can feel free to change the settings and make it look however you want. I'm going to take the main camera here. I'm going to collapse the... Uh, component there for bloom and flares to get it out of the way select the camera here for the controller and I'm gonna go back to image effects now we do have a whole bunch let me show you the edge detection okay we have two different types of edge detection we have edge detection color and edge detection depth normals that's the one I'm gonna use so let me go ahead and select that one immediately you can see in the game view that something interesting happened I now have these black edges that outline my objects now, if this looks familiar to you, then you've probably played a game um, like Borderlands on the Xbox 360. Um, this is a game that uses um, pretty much a similar edge detection feature. However, they're using the Unreal Engine 3, and it uses a, a little bit of a different uh, way of achieving this. Their, their method is a lot more complex than this one. But you can see how in Unity you can use a simple image effect to achieve a very similar effect to having sort of the, that cell shaded look of having these uh, black edges outline your objects. Now if you come over here to edge detect effect normals you'll notice that there's only one parameter, the advanced parameter. So we'll turn that on and now we'll get all of these settings here that we can use to control the edge detection effect. So basically what it does is it detects the edges of objects both the silhouette, the outline of the object on the edges of the actual geometry and it can also detect the normals based on things like bump maps, normal maps, stuff like that. So that's why you see all this black stuff here on the floor because it's trying to place edges around the bumps of the normal maps. So you can use different uh, parameters here like in the sensitivity controls, the depth parameters. We can increase this to increase the distance from the camera at which lines are drawn. So if I decrease this a lot, you're going to see that lines are drawn pretty close to the camera. As I increase it, I can see lines drawn farther away from the camera. So a lot more is captured. The normals, if we change this, we can change where basically a threshold of where the black lines are drawn. So if, if this is too high, we're going to see black uh, or edge detection on everything, every single little bump, nook, and cranny. So if we reduce this a bit, we can sort of play around with this and get edges on the silhouette of objects. More of that borderlands type of look. We can use the spread to spread out the black edges. So you can see how I can spread them out. Make them kind of thicker or thinner. I can change the edge intensity to make the, uh, the edge more intense or less intense. I'm going to leave it alone. And then we have this really interesting parameter for draw edges only. If I increase this all the way up, you're going to notice that my scene goes from having color to being just pure white. So we can get this kind of cool 2D uh, sketch effect similar to games like Echo Chrome on the PlayStation 3. See that? So your game can look kind of cartoony and fake. This could be a visual style that you want to use. You know, anything's on the table when it comes to game development. So if this is a visual style you want to use, you can go ahead and use that. If you want to change the background color, simply go to background and choose a different background color. As you can see, I can choose any one of these colors that I want. Okay, And we can also blur edges to soften them up. You can see how the edges are softened up now. It looks very blurry, kind of hazy. Okay, And then we have these blur spread, blur iteration parameters to allow us to control that blurring. So if the edges are kind of harsh, you can kind of soften them up, blur them out, things like that. So if I take the normals down, I can see the edges of the shelves, the boxes, the support beams, things like that. It can be a pretty cool effect, so it's there if you want to use it. I'm going to go ahead and right click on it and hit remove component to get rid of it. I don't want that effect. I just want to show it to you though because it's pretty interesting. Another cool effect is motion blur. If we go up to component, let's go to back to image effects. We have motion blur. What motion blur is going to do if I check out the parameters here, I only get two parameters, an extra blur parameter and a blur amount. Basically what this does is, if I go ahead and hit play, as I move around, you're going to see blur on motion, hence the name motion blur. So basically this blurs out anything that has motion. So as I turn my head around in the game and I look around, I get this motion blur effect. So what can this be useful for? Well, let's say you have a game where your character in a cutscene or something like that 
um, or maybe a, a first person shooter, somebody throws uh, maybe a tear gas grenade at you. You can use the motion blur grenade to kind of disorient the player, make it harder for them to see for maybe a limited amount of time while they recover from the concussion grenade or a tear gas grenade or maybe some mace to their eyes, something like that. So if you use your imagination, the possibilities are endless. Motion blur is a pretty cool effect. I actually like it. I'm going to use motion blur for this scene. I'm going to reduce the effect to something like maybe 0.1, very small amount of motion blur. You notice as I turn around, it's hard to see the motion blur. It's very, very subtle. You can barely see it. I like to use motion blur this way because if it's too strong, you make the player dizzy. Uh, it just will not work. It won't look right. But if you make it very subtle, the player won't be able to notice it right away. But as they play the game, it'll feel natural. It'll make uh, kind of sense. Then finally, let's have a look at Sun Shafts. One of the newest image effects in Unity 3 is Sun Shafts. Okay? And sun shafts are pretty cool. They can help uh, your sky and sun look a little bit better. So let me take the entire first person controller. We're going to go outside because it would make sense. Sun shafts are viewable outside, not really inside, unless there's holes in the ceiling and we can see to the outside. So I'm going to place this guy about here. Make him kind of face toward the sun. Okay, so this is how it works. Let me go to main camera. And I'm going to go to component image effects down here you see sun shafts again that's new in unity 3.0 I'm gonna apply sun shafts to my first person to my camera here and let me actually rotate the camera and have it face up toward the sky let me turn the effect off so this is what it looks like with the effect off I'm just gonna turn it on at default settings and this is what it looks like with an on so off on off on before after before after you can see clearly there's a pretty big difference we get kind of this halo type effect of this brightness of the sun in our sky okay we get some parameters here we have a depth texture parameter I recommend keeping this on as it'll give you the best results we have a resolution parameter by default set to low uh, most of the time you can get away with low settings it actually still looks good and of course increasing it to high is going to give you it's going to hit your performance so just keep that in mind we have a sun transform parameter we don't have to use this but uh, it can be pretty useful what you can do is you can come over here and plug in if you go to your scene assets remember I created a sunlight I could plug in the sunlight's transform right there and it'll use the transform to help it uh, determine where that sun shafts are coming from um, there's some sun placement parameters here I, I recommend leaving this at default that works out pretty good the sun color I'm gonna warm that up a little bit because I want something a little bit warmer you can see uh, right here is white that doesn't look very good but if we go with like a warmer yellowish color it starts to look much much better okay we can increase the radius and you can see the sun shafts kind of reach farther see that how they kind of spread out more so you have the freedom to change the radius based on how your scene looks you have a blur offset if I knock that down I get no offset on the blur if I increase that too much you could see how the sun shafts get offset right there see that I find keeping a little bit of offset pretty good it looks pretty nice we have a blur iteration so that'll help to blur that out if you don't have any it'll look kind of stiff and sharp you probably don't want that so adding a couple of blur iterations can look pretty good and then of course intensity we can intensify this effect as much or as little as we want and then we have this use alpha mass parameter this works exactly the same like what we saw before with this effect the blooming flares effect remember that how we can use the alpha mass parameter to control um, the, uh, the effect you can take this around the middle if you want or you can give full control to your alpha and you're probably wondering, well, which alpha is controlling this right now? Well, the alpha that's controlling this is actually the alpha right now from the sky. And let me show you that. Let me go to my warehouse sky shader. Remember this sky material we set up in another video uh, a little while ago? If I look at these textures, you'll notice that they have an alpha channel. And this alpha channel is being used right now by the sun shafts effect to regulate and modulate where the sun shafts are located. And why is this useful? Well, it's extremely useful because the black areas here show areas where there's uh, clouds. So you can see in the image here above the sun, we have these dense clouds in the picture. Okay? In real life, if we have really dense clouds like this, they can block out light. All right? So what this does, it allows you to have sun shafts come through the clear parts of the sky and get blocked out by the clouds in your sky texture. So by using alphas, inside of your skybox textures you can actually 
uh, achieve some cool effects. And these are the textures that actually come with Unity 3.0, but you can actually create your own in a 2D editing program like Photoshop or something like that. So let me go back over here. So I like using Alpha Mask on. It gives me the most control. So let me hit play and let me run in here in the scene real quick to see how this looks. If I look up, you can see as the roof there obscures the light, you can see that cool, see that cool uh, sunlight effect right there. Those sun shafts kind of interacting with my viewpoint right there. That looks really cool. And this effect tends to look really nice when you have objects kind of occluding the sun. Right now, the, the roof is just kind of these straight right angles. So it's not going to create very interesting results. But if you had things like trees, a forest, lamp posts, or anything kind of blocking out the sun in little pieces, you would get a really cool effect. The effect will look much better. Okay, but this actually looks pretty nice. I like using sun shafts. I'm going to set maybe the resolution to normal. So that's going to do it for this video. I'm going to end this video here. And uh, we're going to continue with more interesting post-processing effects. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to make your games look the same way that they look on AAA titles, games like uh, Gears of War, Killzone 2, things like that. So I'll see you in the next video.